Hello everyone, welcome back to Napoleonic Wars and we have a Sunday line battle for you and it is the Swiss Sunday line battle so let's have a look on the sides and it is of course those dastardly ostriches they're up against the United Kingdom and <laughs> yeah that's a fair thing the amount of times I've had problems with people getting into a server on time Obviously, it's the internet, you can have connection issues, sometimes you have problems, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I've had people turn up like half an hour late and some people haven't turned up at all. It just gets very silly. Never mind, anyway. So, you can see here on the side of the Austrians, we have the Swiss first, you've got the 7th in there, the 47th, the 3rd SG... And I think that's about Antercio, of course, those fine fellows from Spain and uh, uh, rare areas, I think you can say. Um, RRA, the third foot on the, the United Kingdom side, along with the 13E and the, five, the fifth in there as well. Always a pleasure to see them. And let's see. And we've got the RRA. No doubt that's the fifth line company. And quite a few of the RRA in there. So that's always great to see. Anyway, you can see now, here we are with Lance Corporal Derek from the 3rd SG leading the boys forward. There's the watcher. And at the back is Private Tralar. Or Trala. It could be Tralala. It'd be difficult to say. And there we can see Heineken being taken down already. And there's Ansgar. And it looks like the... Uh, the Elite Mercio, or the Tercio, sorry, are taking out some people very quickly indeed. Let's have a go and have a look at them. There's Manuel Pro, and there's Brujo, and there's Kvoth. Those are names I recognise. And this is who they're up against. Oh, heavens, look at this. Musketeer on Musketeer action. Lights and lights and lights. Yeah, this is going to be nasty. This is going to be very nasty. And here you've got the second Scottish there. And over here you've got the 50th Reg. There's Carl. And there's Johnny Voss trying to keep the boys together, keep them safe, keep them protected against the enemy. And down goes a member of the 50th. So, you've got some horses wandering around the place. And they are the RRA, the 5th Light Cavalry. And here, of course, more of the RRA. Oh dear, we've lost Private Dick Butt. We've lost Dick Butt. Oh dear. And here is a real so from the RRA. As a cannonball's bounce nearby him. Over here is aggressive engineering done by veteran Pickle. And we move over to see some Black Watch. And there's the 13th. There's Dragon Rip 10 leading the boys over to one side. So there's Tercio. And here is the 7th. All in the skirmishers, don't they look fantastic? As you've got these fellows here from the 3rd SG. There's Corporal Derek with his flag holder behind him. There's Invitational Irish from the 1st. And there's the 3rd SG. So, aha, look at this. It's the 5E. So there's Potvis. And who's this? Of course it is. Our fine bearded friend, Mr. French Monk. Checking out the area. Let's see who's on the order for today. There's Tiger. And there's Kev. And next to him, a lot of seamen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Life is hell. <laughs> and there's Musketeer in there with them. And Potvis as well. So, all looking good. Unfortunately, the, the, uh, the king of the melee, Dommy, had to go early because his dinner was ready. So, yeah, what can I say? One of the advantages of being older, you don't have to worry about that. You can schedule your dinner when you want. So, let's go and see if we can find out what's going on as Tercio are getting into a little bit of a stand-up fight with the RRA. And you can see now they've made an attack onto the artillery very quickly indeed. And here's Bradders, Lance Corporal, and you can see them going in. And Tercio being very aggressive and killing multiple members. But it looks like now maybe the Tercio are starting to get the better of them. As cavalry, light cav comes in, bashes into the side to support their RRA teammates. 
And it looks like Tercio Kavoth finally gets finished off. And it looks like the artillery section may survive. They've still got their Johnson's baby bud, so they can still reload. Whether or not they've still got their lighting ones, it's difficult to say, but they're in safe location. And you've got these guys up in the corner covering them. Turd, turd. And Isa. And Mr. Wolf. And second Lieutenant Kingo. That fine face of a commanding officer there. So, however, sneaking up on one side, trying to outflank, is another member of the RRA, the second Scottish, I'm guessing. Look at these fellows. There's Raz at the back, Emil. And Franson, and now they're going to charge in. Are they going to turn and fire? No, they're waiting. They've got to get the line together. Ah, look at that. They've now moved in. They've actually pulled back into this position to try and support their team members over there on the left. They've now pulled back slightly. You can see the light cavalry over here on the right-hand side covering that far flank just in case the Austrians decide to make a little bit of a push in that direction. And that's kind of, I think, what the, the uh, first here. There's Oberst Space. Of course, find Mr. Space and Music Victor. There's Buckshot, Blake, Chucky, Chevalier. I like dogs. Uh, just took a bullet and Angsar as well. Working together with the third SG. Correction, some of the third SG. Wow. They just lost their flag holder. So flags are going to now get picked up and carried with the members of the third. And this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to get into a good outflanking position. And that's some distance. That really is. The guys really know how to shoot in this game. It's quite impressive. But they are up against the likes of Baker Rifleman. Like these fellows here. With that added accuracy that is the Baker Rifle. The rifling on that particular barrel. Means they're going to have probably further and more accuracy when it comes to shooting than the standard muskets. The old Black Bess. So, here's Yud from RRA and Engineer Pickle now going in the back of the line there as well. And you can see, are they going to make a further push into this location? Because it looks like the skirmishers from the 7th have taken up this particular area because it's well defended you can defend it from cavalry the trouble is these guys are going to be rather susceptible to cavalry and basically what happens is it means that uh, that's kind of what they're looking for that's safety against the cavalry and they're not really equipped for melee to be fair so they have to sort of adjust themselves as to what they can do. And here you can see the British line taking a bit of pressure from the cavalry. Perhaps not him. Or Simon shot down. And more fire coming in, taking down Derek. So they've lost their Lance Corporal. Now they're going to have to adjust things. They've also lost Pickle by the looks of it. But these guys doing a good job of holding this particular position. There we go. Nice shot in there from GP. Taking down one of the enemy as cannonballs continue to come flying through and taking down poor old Carl. And this is the problem. Just look at that. You can see the cannonball, the cannon position right in the center. So these guys are in a very dangerous position. They want to really sort of move over here a little bit more, but they daren't. Whether or not they sort of need to split up and put a bit more behind here. So, rather than putting everything today. Whoa! So, look at this. Homed in on them. And now they're pushing back. Which is probably a good idea. The best thing for them, really, under the circumstances. Now. Thanks for the help, 7th. And the 47th. And you can see, oh god, of artillery Fort Derp is being built. Phantom Fapper, Sapper of the 47th. And there's Private Cookies. And we're still the Private Cookies. And who's this man? Albanian Trash. With a fine nozzle. Look at that. That's a nose to be proud of there. 
with Chiscaro. Uh, oh, look at that. A nice team kill. You can see Lenane. And a little bit of engineering work that seems somewhat floaty, I have to say. I could be wrong. And Doobie trying to do a little bit of re-engineering. He's clearly not happy with that gap in the middle of the ground. So Doobie probably having to... Yep, calling the engineer over, see. Sort your shit out, boy. Not happy with the job you've done. There we go. Lower that position. There we go. Now he's lowering it into the ground position. There we go. There's a better position. Now it's in a much, much better position. So. Now. Black Lord from the third. Detachment of the Swiss. And here is the Swiss 5e. There's French. He brought them up in a little bit of an ambush. Managed to get a shot off. But here's Sons Sonderskov. Now as part of the battle. And here we are. Just to make him extra uncomfortable, we'll watch French. He's fighting the battle. Goes in for a quick stab. Gets stabbed in the bottom. But he manages to back off. He's going to watch out. He's going to get a rifle butt in the bottom. Oh, we're watching French as he's getting diddled by two Austrians. Oh, this is not good. Down goes poor French. Diddled, double diddled by Australians. Or Austrians even. Them too. In fact, there were even Australians and Austrians in this battle. That's how badly French got diddled. Anyway, we'll move on. And we return fresh from the repeated diddling of poor Mr. French Monk in the last round. And now let's find out what they've got planned. Pickle, no doubt, building a massive platform again. The Zapple dragging the cannon into position. And over here on the right-hand side, there is, of course, French Monk. And there's Potvis at the back. All members of the 5th. Now, here we have the 50th Reg getting themselves ready. And there, Wallace bringing the cannon up. Limbered, ready to go. Now, it looks like we've got some lights. Skirmishers moving out. There you go. The six RFL, the six rifles. Led by Kingo. Fantastic stuff. And, of course, the second Scottish. Also of the RRA. Led by their fine commander. Yid. Now, let's see what they've got planned, shall we, in this battle of sand and smoke and bullets. So, Adolphus from the RRA, and you can see here, engineering pickle on the case. Extreme pickling is occurring. There we go, fine, aggressive building by pickle. Unfortunately, they've moved the cannon away. Just as he's built that. Poor Pickle. But he's going to probably end up building another one over here. But he's building in some additional defences. So we'll have to wait and see. Are they actually all... Oh, crikey. They didn't even get to put their flipping cannon down. Holy crap. Wow. They really went aggressive on that artillery. And it's the Tercio. Correction, it's minus one of the Tercio. As Totaro gets killed by a cannonball. And here is the Elite Hazar. And Sergio Kong. And Chesquero. Now under attack from the RRA Light Cavalry. Adjutant Lud. Can they defend themselves against this attack? Watch out. Oh, fine turn. Gone in for a quick turn and a stab. Can he do it? But these are the elite of the Tercio Brigades. Not to be messed with. Unfortunately, the cavalry down goes one more horseman. The last remaining horseman. Is he turning to fight or is he going to cheese it? And here. It looks like the elites have made their way through. Managed to survive. But oh dear. Now this is a bad situation here for these guys. As now the skirmishers, because they're not really designed, they don't have very long swords with which to fight back against the horse. 
and they don't have bayonets on their rifles, meaning they are susceptible to cavalry attacks, meaning it's going to be a major nightmare for them. They've lost more people than they would have liked. Could they have killed more? Possibly. Sadly, I think one of the lines was not close enough to provide them with the support that they needed, but hey-ho, diddly do things happen. So, there you go, the 70. And there's Bubba. So, they'll be taking pot shots at the enemy, trying to force them back. Let's see. And the Tercio Elite are really pushing, pushing the point. But now, the 50th Reg is Yuzchrist pushing back against Tercio. And this could be a problem for them. We'll have to wait and see. But Tercio are the elites in this situation. So we'll have to wait and see. Sergio Kong in there. And there's Miss Wolf. Private of the six rifles. Sadly, no bayonet. Only a rifle butt. Down goes another member of Tercio Elite. And another. Oh, wow. So it looks like the Tercio Elite may... Whoa, Nelly. Hello, Cannonball. Wow, holy crap. There's Fappa with a nice kill onto Heineken and Juka. God save the king! So. Let's see what happens as now the members of the Austrian army continue to push, the push back against the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 man advantage okay well right now I'm seeing a 59 players to 60 players so that's a one one man advantage so it's possible forgot to carry the full stop or the point but we'll see anyway volunteer pickle murdered Adolphus and on the cannonball Wallace looking for that all important kill but sadly not Unsuccessful under the circumstances as Victor of the third SG. There's Nascor. And now you can see here, supported by the fine horses. The clippity clops supporting them, those heavy cavalry. Let's see if we can find some Brits. Here is the 50th Reg. As you can see, one of the cannoneers, Dylan, there. And up on the right hand side, there's Bradders still. Firing back at the enemy with the cannon. Well, precisely. Ouch! Down goes Carl. Shot to death by Bubba. And over here on the left side. Whoops, a daisy. Down goes Adolphus. Right smack bang into his cannon. He will now be one with his cannon forever. As over here on the side. You can see multiple members of the 3rd SG being taken down by a combination of line troops and long-reaching swords of the cavalry. Very unfortunate. As here's the first with I Like Dogs and Space moving into what they hope will be an advantageous position with 20 United Kingdom and 40 Austrians remaining. So, where are they is the question. And there you can see some of the British artillery making a run for it. There we go. So. And Oberst Grimm of the 7th. Who's this over here? Delta Nose. And what sort of nose has he got? Oh, he's got not a bad, not a bad nose. On a level of nosage, I think we'll give that a fair six or seven. There's Recruit Tony of the 3rd SG, one of the few remaining. So, moving out as the Austrian line, you see these guys keeping the numbers relatively close. There's abandoned trash, or ba abandoned trash is taken out. And this is probably what they're going to be going up against. There's more fire coming in. There's, there's Cadet Nova from the 50th Reg. Here they 
And Victor from the third SG charging them down, pushing them back to try and do as much damage and get as many kills as they possibly can. You can see they're supported on their right flank. Now they're turning to fight. Down goes one. That was poor old Brigadier General Musketeer. And this is the 5e defending themselves. And they're charging to attack. French leading the boys. As you can see here, you've got Tok, Iris, Wolfie. Quite a few of the 3rd SG being taken down. Oh, the 5e and the RRA also doing a good job. Oh, who was that taking a shot? Mr. Potvis. Down goes poor GFR Tiger from the 5th. And there we go. It's the all charge. And a loss of seamen. And Mr. Potvis charging into battle. Here come the Austrians. Yeah, look to your left. There we go. As we watch these guys get involved with a little bit of stabby goodness. And French being double teamed, triple teamed in fact. Yeah, sadly wasn't going to go well for French there. So we move on to the next round and we'll be right back. Well, we're back after a map change and here, in keeping with the time of year, is a nice snowy map. How lovely. And here is the British Artillery Adolphus on the horse, ready to lead the horse and the cannon up the hill. Or apparently not. Apparently couldn't take it, so... Never mind, poor old Adolphus is no more. However, the horse is off on its own. So they better get it back quickly because the cannon is now away by itself. So this could be an adventure all of itself with the cannon. Let's see. Aha, could this be a replacement? No, it's a commanding officer, Major Olafsson of the RRA, trying to stop the horse from escaping so that this gentleman, Zippo, or Zappel, can get on him. So, now that that's over, Sob 17 of these lights with Oberst Grimm from the 7th and the 3rd SG working together. And they are shooting at their enemy. Let's see. Find detachment of Baker Riflemen. And we can see here there's Mustard here, Brigadier. And they're all moving out, led by Monk. Mr. French Monk himself. Whoa, Nelly, down goes Spazzy and Big Boss. Team killed with a lovely cannonball. Second Lieutenant Taz of the third foot. With a fine beard, sir. Lining the boys up just behind the brow of the hill to give them a little bit of cover. Doesn't see an available shot. So now moves the boys out. We've obviously got the second Scottish in there supporting from that old position, taking pot shots at the likes of these fellows. And there's Victor and other members of the third SG supported on their left by Tercio, Captain Villa. Fine name, seen many times as here's Victor going in for a bit of a charge. Good stop of the uh, bullets with the sword there. At least that's what we think he was doing. But now you can see here the cavalry are attacking from multiple directions as he did. Tries to make his way out as the other members of the third foot also try and get to a safer position to see 
if they can actually do it as here. Whoa, Nelly. NASCAR with a very, very close message. Oh, message. Cannonball, even. Yeah, I know what I meant. <laughs> as here is NASCAR going in for an opportunistic stab on Nordskov, which he did manage to get. Supporting his teammate by stabbing Adjutant Lud in the back of the neck. So NASCAR doing a good job there. But he's got to watch out for those cannonballs. As over on his right, Tercio. Is that a cheese-related name I just saw? I think it may have been. It was Cheese Squero. And now the fifth taking some damage. See if we can lock in on them. Where are the fifth? Aha! Aha! Yes, Dommy has returned. Fresh from eating dinner, probably very quickly. And French and the lads. Life is hell and Mr. Potvis are now moving up to this artillery position. And here, Phantom Fapper is trying to defend his boys as the cannonballs take down Tiger and Dommy. Oh dear. Oh, that's not good. Very unfortunate. Can only imagine. Oh, down goes poor French as well. And Invitational. Sorry, Staff Doobie as well. So Doobie's finished off by the Austrians. And up here, a lot of seamen finished off. Yes, not much to say there. Oh, goodness. What's going on here? Who's fighting against the entire enemy? It's Potvis being diddled by multiple Austrians from multiple directions. And he's fighting for his life against the entire Austrian army. Oh, forces a team kill. And he's ducking and diving on the inside of here until finally murdered by Fapper. So, that is the end of the 5th Detachment of the Swiss. And we move over. So, the first. And in charge, there is Chevalier. And now let's have a look at our numbers. 30 versus 29, so it's still very, very equal. Everything to play for in this particular fir first battle on the snowy map. A little bit of horse assassination going on over there. There we go. Horse assassination completed. And... Toff's wrong chink, I guess. Or cart yards. Off Leron Chink. Oh my goodness, what a name and a half. Or is it Hearts of? Is it Hearts of? I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh, Hearts of Iron Chink. <laughs> oh dear. And Sob 17. Moving out together along with Jeep. And Bubba. And Nana. Or Nala. No, banana. Banana. So they've now joined the back of this line. So this line will be moving out. Corporal Chevalier leading the boys. And now let's see if we can figure out where they're going, what they're doing and what they're up to. So 29 and 25. So right now the Brits only have an advantage by four. Not sure where he's going. He may have lagged out. Or just wasn't paying attention. Difficult to say. And here are the British. The Scottish Detachment. Oh, looks like somebody's defended. De 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 pleur, pleur. Looks like somebody has surrendered already. Either that or he's doing his calisthenics. It's difficult to tell. So here you can see the cannon position of Zappel. And they're waiting for an opportunity to shoot at the Prussians. Sorry, at the Austrians, I should say. And Frebi uh, Trebia, Ca Trebian? Yeah, Trebian. Bombardier, Lance Bombardier, in fact. And there is our old so warrant officer checking through his spyglass looking for the enemy. 
and they're supported by these lovely fellows here. Third foot on the left flank. So, Invitational Chucky from the first. There's today. Gestapo. There is space, of course. Invitational Irish and Angsar. So these guys still on the move, working to get their way around the enemy. They've got to be careful. Now, who's this down here? They're shooting in that direction, so they've got an, a small force behind them. So they've got to be careful they don't get sandwiched. So let's have a look. There's Conlon from the third foot. And second Lieutenant Taz, or Lieutenant. For old so, a bit of a standoff maybe. Uh, 25 and 29. I think both the teams have got to get to a point where they'll see each other. Or well, that helps take the numbers down. A nice team kill from Lenane into Tataro. So let's see if we can get up high. Maybe get an idea of what's going on. Because there's definitely something going on. Now, the only drawback is... Ah, there we go. We can see some firing going in on the right side of the map there. That's really where most of it's going. And they're up against the line that is on one of the pathways directly in front of them. So that at least gives them an option to fire in that general direction and maybe clear off some of the numbers. But these guys keeping a respectful distance from each other. Understandably so. As these guys seem to be a pretty good shot. And we've also got some additional forces coming up from the back here. Possibly looking to outflank maybe. Or to add ouch as cannonballs take down two members of the first. And that's very nasty indeed. And those guys in the centre literally going from about six or seven men to about three now in total. Correction looks like four. So you can see. And there's the all charge being given. So we have to keep an eye on the guys, see how they get on. And it's understandable, I mean, all charges were brought in to stop everyone essentially just camping. And then the map would go on forever and ever and ever. Everyone would get bored, start leaving. And it's so, yeah, it's just to keep the battle a little bit more entertaining. Now, these guys are going to have a rough time because there's a lot of Austrians in there. And all charge means all charge. <laughs> that means all of you charge not just some of you not just maybe one or two of you but all of you so we'll continue to watch the melee from up high as you can see poor old Timmy finished off and Olafsson the commanding officer also unceremoniously put out to pasture as down goes Chucky So, behind them, more Brits. The lobster backs are coming in to support. The question is, how much support are they going to have in order to finish off the enemy, which is eight people? Eight versus 14, so the numbers have been well and truly trimmed. But the question is, how long... Can they survive? Or can the Austrians actually manage to fight back with that number of people? They will have definitely the disadvantage. But we'll have to wait and see what happens in that regard. So we are essentially waiting for the battle to begin. And here it is. The final detachments of the Austrians. Down goes Yili, down goes Brahu. 
Oh my goodness, look at this. And a nice team kill in there as well. More murdering over here on the left side. You can see them continuing to murderize left, right and centre. With Tercio losing certainly less, maybe less people than their enemy. As down goes one of the 47th as well. As down also goes the RRA. Let's see if we can follow them in. Find out how they're getting on. As there we go, down goes Hearts of Iron. And we move on to the next round. And we return for what is the final round of this battle for this year until they break for Christmas and enjoy much mead, wine, alcoholic insensibility, and virtually zero shooting. So, the third foot, there's Cadet Walker, Swide Barrow Barker. And checking through his spyglass, there's Second Lieutenant Taz. Doesn't he look handsome? Checking through that spyglass for information. Next to him, Corporal Heineken. With excellent, excellent sideboards, have to say. Look at them. Now, they are supported on the left-hand side by the Sith Rifles. Paritsu. Whoa! Wow. There's Miss Wolf. Looks like we've got some people crying for a reset. Bit late for a reset, understandable. Never mind. There's Ycat of the third ST. And Zweikat again. I'm sure we just saw him. Never mind. Harkins. Drummage. We heard drumming. Lance oh, Corporal Derek. Find drumming from him. Keeping all the boys in order. So. Let's see. We move over to the RRA, Captain Iza. Look at that face of, uh, oh God, look at that face, my God. I really hope they had these kind of face designs in Mountain Blade Bannerlord 2, or Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, I should say. As we move over to Miss Wolf, Wolfie. Cadet Wolfie. And Mr. Wolf. So there's a whole family of wolves there. Promisu, Kingu, and Ms. Wolf. Wow, lots of wolves. As down goes Doobie, team killed by Bruhu. <laughs> oh dear, poor... Poor Doobie. <laughs> oh God. And it's all gone horribly wrong. Yeah, it looks like the Tercio have revolted. And now, I'm to be beaten back by the enemy. So. Let's see. So, let's have a look as we're looking at the second Scottish. There's Raz. There's no name from the 50th Reg. There's Heineken and Taz at the back here. Keep the boys focused on the play, on the battle that is occurring. Huzzah! 
So, let's see. Agent St. Lud of the RRA. Down goes poor French Monk. Killed by Big Boss. As there is Iris. Looking to get in and do a little bit of damage. <coughs> As I pause the cough, sorry. There's Musketeer, Staff Brig. So, poison to cough again. What's going on? And so, let's have a look as there is Pickle from the RRA. And now you can see some additional Baker riflemen moving up to support the line. Here we go, the third foot. And also the second Scottish. Over here on the right, Franzen's getting a bit keen. And it's really annoying because I do get this very persistent cough. I just can't seem to get rid of it. It's really annoying. It's not so much a dry throat or anything like that. It's almost... I don't know what it is. Anyway, random lurgy. So. Music Victor carrying the flag. The third SDG, Zwycat. And at the back, Mascot Forts. Times three. Because times one just wouldn't be good enough, would it? So, let's see. What's over here, I wonder? Some more. It's the Swiss 70. Sub 17, along with Cadet Big Boss. And Blacklord. So, we'll wait and see what happens with those guys. It's 26 versus 44, so the Brits definitely have the advantage right now. It's the second Scottish hold their position. Supported on the right flank by the third foot. As these guys are charging into battle, they're going to get cut down in all sorts of forms. As you can see also the, third, the 50th Reg there. Dizzy Christ, no name. And Carl at the end. See, they're still taking some bullets. And now you've got the third foot moving up to push the advantage. Over here on the left, the far flank, covered by the six rifles. So they can hold them at bay. And yeah, this is what they're going to have to get away from. All of this horrible cannon bullage. Just brutal. Yeah, something very brutal is going on there. Doesn't look pleasant to say the least. So. The flag still being held with pride. And tenacity. But we're not sure how long. It will continue to be held for. On behalf. Of the Austrian Empire. As they're coming under fire. Down goes Iris. Down goes Derek. Poor drummer Derek. Music Victor trying to dodge. Harkins as well. A little bit of dodgeroo there. Trying to avoid those bullets. As it's now 14 versus 40 with the British definitely having the advantage. As Viking gets killed in the Scottish team. Or well, Scottish section. Ouch! Down goes one of the men. And he picks up the flag. There goes Harkins with the flag. Trying to get away. Is he going to make it? Is he going to be supported? Oh, random horse drives by. So, Harkins coming under fire as he cheeses it in the opposite direction. Question is, what will happen? No doubt they'll come across him very soon. He'll run into a line and be horribly murdered. But he's got a little bit of support. There we go. The all charge is given. As the first go into battle, with the bayonets polished and sharpened. Chevalier, got these guys over here from the second, his pool cue. And Parisu, out comes the, oh, picks up a rifle musket. With a bayonet on the end, that's extra 17 inches of reach. 
Because who doesn't want an extra 17 inches of reach? As you can see, commanding officer getting into a battle with Chevalier. Now, let's see. As Chevalier doing a good job of acquitting himself. Whoa! Chevalier doing a very good job. Acquitting himself. Kills another commanding officer until finally gets horribly murdered. And that's it for the Swiss line battle. My thanks to all the regiments that attended. And of course, my thanks to Doobie for allowing me to cast. And we'll see you again for more Napoleonic Wars very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>